Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me in this webinar today. Today we're going to be talking about Collaborate with AutoCAD Plan 3D and BIM 360. Okay, cool. So, just waiting for that. Okay, cool. Now, moving swiftly along. So, as you can see, I'm Quinn Kennedy, Application Engineer here at Micrographics Durban. And yes, so one of my primary focuses is Plant 3D. So this topic is quite close to me because I use a plant quite significantly. It takes up a large portion of my time. And actually, um, collaboration is one of the biggest features also of plants as to how we can share data across different um, work groups, different platforms, etc. Um, and one of the issues that we had um, especially previously, was trying to share data between different sites. And that is where BIM 360 actually really helps. Now, I'm also intending this to be more of a high-level overview of things, but I'll get to a little bit more about that in a second. So if you have any queries or questions, please bond them into the chat section below. I've already just quickly included a system at the bottom. Um, yes, so please, if you've got any queries, um, please put them there and I will get to them as we go through the chat. Okay, so taking a look at a quicker look at our agenda today. So we're going to do, of course, the introduction, which we're currently at at the moment. We are then going to take a look at setting up your AutoCAD Plant 3D project for BIN 360. We're going to look at how to connect to an existing project. Oops, forget the project of the end. <laughs> How to access your design data with a backup locally. Alternative ways that people work with their pros and cons, and then a conclusion. Now, the reason why I'm harping on, especially the end section about the alternative ways people work, is to try and kind of illustrate the reason why BIM 360 is a revolutionary way of actually doing things, and why it's a lot better and easier in a lot of ways. And so, yes, I'm going to show you BIM 360. Not, like I said, super in-depth. It's very high level just to get you guys working with it so that you can get an idea of what we need to do, how we need to set it up. Um, and you'll see it's quite simple. It's actually not that hectic at all. So, moving swiftly along. Um, also, by the way, <laughs> this is not going to be a death by PowerPoint. I personally dislike those myself. So, we <laughs> I'm going to just quickly show you basically as we're working through it. So, now we're working, the first thing we're going to look at is setting up the Plant 3D project um, in BIM 360 and then also locally onto uh, the workstation. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to jump across to your favorite web browser and you're going to go to admin.b360.autodesk.com forward slash login. That will then bring you to your login screen, obviously. <laughs> We're going to sign in. Now, obviously, BIM 360 is a subscription service. You're going to have to be subscribed to it. And, of course, um, you would then use your Autodesk login to log into your account. Unfortunately, if you're not subscribed to BIM 360, you won't be able to log in, of course. So... I've already just got this stuff pre-saved. Probably not the best security idea, but it just helps for this demonstration. And now, once we are logged into our um, main account, you can see all of the projects that we've got over here. Most of them, this is actually not going to be very helpful for. But for in here, you can then see what's going on. Now, this would be the main section. Now, because Plan 3D is fitting you to the whole ecosystem of BIM 360 in comparison to some of the other projects. There's still um, some things you're waiting to get fleshed out. Like, for instance, we can only add a project to the main project directory. So not like a project nested in another project, if that makes sense. So what we have to do here in, other, in projects, which is normally our default section where we land. Like I said, we're not going to go in depth as to bits and pieces like how some of the back-end stuff works. I'm not even going to go into the back-end of too much about the SQL databases, etc. and that. Just high-level stuff here. So under our projects, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set us basically a 
area that we're going to be working in. I'm going to click add on my project. Now we can then add something to this project itself. So what are we going to name our project? Um, I'm going to call it MGFX. Um, plants 3D webinar project type what are we going to call it so I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to say um, it's a demonstration project because it's for demonstration obviously construction type these fields as long as you okay so only the fields with the little asterisk the little star icon is actually fields that needs to be filled in at that specific time Otherwise, if it doesn't have an asterisk, little star, it doesn't need to be filled in straight away. We could always come back and fill it in maybe at another time, but it's generally better to put in as much information that you've got at that specific time. And you can also change your currency. Here we're in South Africa, so czar. Um, contract type, design build. Project start, end date, numbers, etc addresses uh, any other thing I'm going to change here is the country itself so South Africa lovely sunny South Africa and we are in plus two Pretoria uh, yes plus two is around over here somewhere Harare Pretoria there we go so oh you can then also then specify a image I know that that's our company logo one and there's our company logo. Nice. Okay, so th this can be any image you really want for the project. So now that I've got my bases of the project, like as you can see, all I've defined is just the kind of overviews of the project. So this is gonna be kind of, think of it like a folder that everything is gonna be sitting inside. I'm going to go save and continue. I'll just scroll down a bit. Save and continue. And now this is actually created my project. Believe it or not, that is actually the main thing what we needed to do. The rest of it is just kind of like adding some dressing to it. Now, once you've added the project, it's actually going to go into the project and take us into different things we're going to have to add here. So don't be too worried about everything you see here. Sometimes these things won't be available because, of course, we've got access to almost everything. We've got, we can see everything. Um, I normally just activate, whoops. I'm not going to apply a project template. Uh, normally you would have a project template that everything will be built around. But like I said, we're not going to worry too much about that right now. And I'm just going to activate all th four of those. Don't worry, when you're getting into BIM 360, you would go through it a lot more carefully than what I'm doing over here. This can take a few seconds depending on the servers. Just give it a moment. Could also be that I was um, a bit hasty and I decided to click multiple ones at once. Okay, while that's busy thinking about life, I'm going to then jump to over here. Now you can see we've got members, we've got companies, we've got profile. I'm not going to go too deep into the other two. The one thing though that you are going to want to do is probably add members. So if I click on to members, you can see there's myself, Quinn Kennedy. And as you can see here, I've got project admin, I've got insights, etc., etc., etc. I've got project management and I've got design collaboration. These are the features. Remember those four boxes that I ticked in services? If I jump back to services, you'll probably find they've all been activated now. Yes, they have. These are all the services. And if I jump back to members, I can see what services are assigned where and also admin, etc. If I wanted to, I can then go over here and click add, and then say, for instance, pull, and add maybe more, like some other colleagues, for instance, um, and I can just keep adding to this if I wanted to. Uh, let's say, for an instance, Eldred. Cool. And if I click select, it will then send them an invite. Because I don't want to spam them with it, I am 
not going to do that right now. I might get a little bit, they might get a little bit upset with me. But basically what will happen is it will add them to the bottom here and then I can click and I can give them and I can take away certain permissions. Some of them are reliant on another one. So obviously like for instance, if I take admin away, they won't be able to do project management or design collaboration because they deviate off one another. So what will happen then is they will receive a lovely email similar to this, which will basically state, oh, look, welcome. You've been invited to this specific project. This was actually another one. So that's the reason why the name is a little bit different. I just had this one already ready to go. But normally it does send it immediately, but of course, sometimes there are delays in the service, etc. So with this, we, they'll be sent a lovely little link and then they can just click the go to project um, button and that will take them to the same project over here as well into their default browser of course so that being said that's basically from the plant 3d side the, the actual back end of here that's as far as i really wanting to go to show you as to how to quickly just set up your project just so that you can get up and running you can always add more stuff to it later now so now we've got like i said this empty container this folder and if we drop over here down to our project admin and we go like document management for an instance and we take a look inside there unfortunately this is a <laughs> reliance on your internet so that can be a factor but all i wanted to show you is in our project files there's nothing it's literally a blank empty folder there's nothing in any of these so how do we fix this it's actually quite simple what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump now to my plant 3d now as you can see i have got a very very basic um i have very very basic project here i don't have anything fancy it's literally just three different drawings in fact i think this one's basically empty so there's nothing major going on here Now, the reason why I'm keeping it very basic is because we don't really want, <laughs> uh, as this is a demonstration, I don't really want to be streaming data up and down, up and down, up and down, and this taking forever. But now, to actually push this into the project, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go make sure, of course, everything is saved again, just make sure so that all my views are nicely populated. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the collaborate tab you do you are going to have a, have to have a drawing open by the way for an instance if i were to close these you'll notice i don't have access to the collaborate tab i can't open it so this is a bit of a weird one you have to actually open a drawing in order to get access to the tab now once we get in here if you if you've used autodesk vault or if you know of autodesk vault before which is actually my next tab you'll notice that these icons look very similar. I've got check in, check out, etc. But firstly, this is a local project. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go share project. Now when I go share project, um, it actually tells you exactly what you need to do. So we're going to choose the BIM 360 project folder. Remember, the project folder is what we've just created. Then we're going to upload a copy of our current project, this one that we're currently seeing, into it. And then we can invite teammates. So this kind of gives you a dual way that, of working here in that you could have invited your teammates, as I've shown you before, under our um, project admin. In there, where we can invite our teammates under members. And we can invite it here. Or when we do it over here. And you'll see what I'm, going, what I'm meaning here. Because I'm going to click Get Started. One of the more projects, <laughs> one or more projects are open, they must be closed. So this is a bit of a funky thing, like I said. You have to open a drawing in order to get your collaborate tab to function. But then when you go share project, it's going to say Do, you have to close them. So I, I know it's a bit strange, but yes, it's just the way it works. Okay, so now it's going to see what do we have access to. Now, the one that I've just made was MGFX project. If you don't see it here, 
you might want to change to see if you've got something else there that's our main person in charges account so I'm just gonna click that one that's the one I just created so MGFX plant 3d webinar that's the one as you probably remember we just created I'm going to go upload project So this, depending on your connection speed, system and that, can take a bit of a while. Part of the reason why I created that very trimmed down project that only had two PNID, uh, sorry, one PNID, one 3D drawing in it, it, it wasn't anything very hectic or anything big. Um, specifically just for demonstration of how this upload occurs. Of course, you know, the bigger it is, the more complex it is, the longer it's going to take. And depending on your line as well. Unfortunately, I'm on a LTE connection, so your mileage does vary. Okay, so while we are waiting here, it is actually then going to be populating into here. More so if we go into our documents management. I'm just going to click there, and while we're waiting for that to populate, as you can see, even though it was quite small, it does take a little bit of time to populate in here just remember that there is a lot of back-end stuff that it is doing so a little bit of background information what it's actually doing here as well is plant 3d then actually takes over the whole sql database in the back end so as you may be aware um plant 3d if you're installing it locally on a single machine um or if you've only got like one or two people you're generally probably working the sqlite database so it's just it's got like its own little instance sitting in the back end if you've got a bigger company and you've got a full SQL server that runs with it, cool. But the nice thing about Plant 3D it, with BIM 360 is the BIM 360 takes over all the SQLs dot, um, um, basically it, its duties. So it manages everything from there. A little bit more complex in the back end, but don't worry about that at this stage. I'm just explaining as to what it's doing. So that's part of the reason why it needs to then put everything in the right places, so to speak. Okay, it shouldn't be too much longer now. But yes. Okay, while that is going, let us quickly jump across to here. Now you'll notice that under my documents management, where I've just gone to, I've now got MGFX webinar. And if I open that folder, so you see project file, MGFX webinar. By the way, I can have multiple projects sitting under one project file if necessary. Maybe your projects file is a customer. That all depends on how you want to structure your workflow. Now in here, still just finishing off there, preparing local workspace. And now I'll talk about this locally a, a little bit later because it's very important actually. That's where I was wanting it to get to before I continue. But as it's setting up its associations, sorry about that. Ah, there we go. Nice, okay. So, as you can see, all my stuff is now completely sunk into the cloud. So this should be everything now in there. I'll go on about that in a second. But more importantly, great news, your project is now cloud powered. Yay! Now, what does this actually mean for us and how is this going to um, assist us? Now, firstly, you can go invite team and you'll notice that as soon as I go invite team, guess what's gonna pop up? Folders. And it's going to say, okay, permissions. So this is just another way where you can invite people and add people to it. So in here I can go, okay, add a person. And I can say, okay, cool. Um, uh, let's see, let's put in Paul. No results found. Okay, if you don't have this stuff, you would have to put in the username, email, roles, etc., etc. Otherwise, what you could do is go search for name. Uh, not myself, sorry. Let's go. Oh, some reason it doesn't want to see him in this project. Hmm. Could be because I haven't given it permission. But yeah. So what you would normally do then is just use this add. And then you would add the username, email address, their role, etc. And then their permission level. So view, view only, upload, etc. etc. So it's a little bit different. Um, I prefer doing the other method because it just makes it easier. But this you can set as per folder permission. 
Moving swiftly along. So once you've invited your teammates, you can go close and your project is now in the cloud. Now, you may, if you've been paying attention, notice that all of a sudden now I've got a weird blue B icon over here. So that's BIM 360. This is just telling us that, yay, our project is correct. It means it is correctly in the cloud. And we know that we are working in the cloud now. So if I open up my Project Explorer, or we're showing us which of a project we're currently in, you've noticed that I've now got my projects without an icon, my projects with the blue icon, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but also notice that I've got this other little icon. And if you've used Vault before, you'll recognize that as the Vault Checkout icon, or the Vault icons. Sorry, it's not Checkout, but you, you understand what I mean. So this just helps us at a glance tell us which projects are just a local project on this machine and which ones are actually in our BIM 360 cloud. And I can then chop and change between them how I need. And any thing that I change or jump to, like let me jump to this MGFX testing project. If I open this, and there's a good reason why I'm opening that now. We're just waiting for it to pull down the data. You'll notice it's setting the current project. It's opening the database. Um, if you don't have the drawings locally on your machine or any drawings that it requires, it will then synchronize them to your machine as well. And if I go and I expand like my 3D drawings, I can then see the current status of these drawings as well. Available for checkout, available for checkout. You see there I've got a drawing that is, um, it's not actually in the server, but I need to check in to add it in. And then I've got something that is, it's, it's actually, it's available for checkout, but its status is currently a bit unknown. It doesn't know what to do with it. So if I check it in and check it out, it should actually work. So if I, let's say for instance, let me double click on this one. It's going to then pull it down. So your file is being checked out. Now, it says it's checked out by me and it's fine. I can actually then see as to a bit of its history as to who it worked on. So it's last checked in by Eldred on Wednesday, 15th of April, 2020. Yeah, it's an old one that we were experimenting with. So with this now, it's synchronized everything. By the way, it also synchronizes all your pipe specs and everything that you've had in that um, project prior. And by the way, this can be done with a, also, like I said, your normal SQLite or full SQL database however, whichever one you're working with. Now, with this drawing that I've now pulled it down, we now get the options, as with Vault, if you're familiar with it, to check it in. So I'm going to push it back into the Vault to check it out. So sometimes you can open a, um, open a file without checking it out already. So it's kind of in just a read-only mode. You can attach, so in other words, you can make almost like an XREF between your different projects using your attach features. You can undo a checkout. So with undo, if you're familiar with Vault, it just merely, it's um, whatever, what it's working with is, how this thing is working, should I say, is that you've always got a file sitting on the file server. So if you're used to Vault, that's kind of how it works, is you've got a file server which stores all your drawings. And now using our check in, or should I say check out, what it does is it copies a file locally to your machine and then you can work with it. So I'll get on to why this is a very important thing a little bit later when I'm talking about different ways of working. But just remember this, this pulls a local copy across. What undo checkout means is that it basically, it forfeits whatever you've got on your machine and it restores whatever was on the um, the file server. In this case, because it's been 360 on the cloud server, wherever it's sitting, it says, okay, um, just, you know, forget that, that, that file was ever checked out, just restore whatever you had there previously. So that's very helpful. You've also got different check in, um, collaboration options, sorry, which is the, um, updates, check out drawings when it's opened, you can do it manually otherwise so just for viewing. Um, or, and also when they check in, and a few other little things like um, where to specify your working folders. You can also then share this project again, if you wanted to, I guess, 
you can share design views, which is a cool way of sending um, basically drawing sheets out and giving a person a link to the actual drawing via the internet that they can mark up and then send back to you like saying, hey, this, this drawing's been marked up, please, you know, or just sending out for information. And then we can also then compare our different drawings to see what's the difference. And as many of you probably, if, if you've used PNID before, it can be quite difficult where you've got revision A and revision B and all that's sitting down in the notes is drawing updated. And you're sitting there thinking, well, okay, what has been updated? So you can compare the drawing A with the drawing B. Very, very useful if you're using that tool. And like I said, keeping this very high level overview as to how things work. So once I've done with this drawing, I can go save and I can say check in. The file is going to be checked back in. Depending on the size of the drawing, of course, this will take longer. You've also noticed, by the way, it's got a little lock icon. So this basically means other people cannot accidentally pull that drawing out. It prevents them from doing this. Now that I'm checking it back in, and this is taking its goodness sweet time for some odd reason today. But now that it's checking the file back in, ha, there we go. It's just telling me all of these lovely little things. So keep the files checked open, clean up cached files. You may want to keep this checked if you've got a small SSD drive like I do. So keep the clean up cached files will just get rid of the local copies on your machine. Though that is highly dependent on your system and how your organization runs. Um, keep files opening after checkout. Literally, it'll just keep a copy open in read-only format, basically. I'm going to go OK. So you notice it closed my current drawing. And now it's available for checkout again. If you look at the bottom here on the details, these details are very useful. It tells you a whole bunch of information as to what happened to that drawing. So, as you can see, like I said, if you've used Vault before, this is a very similar way of working. The beauty about this being is because it's controlled by the cloud, you don't have to then worry, um, you know, like how are we going to be working here? How are we going to be, um, you know, collaborating between different people? As long as you've got an internet connection and obviously connected, uh, open your firewall, etc., so that you can actually access these, you can have you can get to these files anywhere in the world. You can be sitting in the middle of Timbuktu if you really wished and be working and collaborating with people right next to you, like they were right next to you. Uh, with all of our communication things, I mean, um, due to the current times, of course, we are living in, um, this is a big boon. And many, many companies actually have realized that this is an amazing tool. And it gets around a lot of the hurdles, which I'll be talking about, like I said, a little bit later. Please just <laughs> bear with me for a little bit. Okay, so now I've quickly shown you as to we've gone into our um, BIM 360. We've created a project folder. We've then gone back into our plant and we have uploaded our project into the cloud. But what happens if you are just a user, you know, you're not the admin, you don't have anything to do this, how do you then grab the project? It's actually very simple. If you use the drop down by project browser and we go open a collaboration project, it's going to open the collaboration project. It's going to be syncing, it's going to be syncing. If you don't see your project here, just use the drop down and you go all accounts. And then you'll be able to see all of your different projects here. Like if I click blog project for an instance and I go open, it's then going to go and it's actually going to grab. Of course, this would only be if you've got permission to grab that. That'd be set by the admin, of course. So you don't even have to worry about that. If you can see it, it's there, etc. Obviously, if you're not too sure, ask questions. But then it will then go and it will actually grab the entire project from the cloud. That's as simple as that. And now I've got the access. This was a very small project that I had. <laughs> okay, the reason why I'm showing question marks there is because I actually deleted those off the cloud. Just to make my life faster for uploading and downloading. But now I have actually got this project and everything in here. Yes, I know it's a blank project because size-wise. <laughs> just for demonstration's sake. But that's how easy it is. Literally just open a collaboration file. Or open a project folder and... 
roster wherever you require. Couldn't be more simple. This is part of the reason why this is one of the best things that was actually int ever introduced in my opinion, because it just makes our workflow so much faster. So that being said, I I've been talking about BIM 360 and a quick way of setting it up, how we can put things into the cloud or projects into the cloud, should I say, and then how we can then from other as a user part, uh, how do we actually grab that project? And uh, as you can see, while working through this, um, with this check-in, check-out system, it removes the uncertainty as to who's doing what, when, and where. Because it allows us to then say, hey, wait, um, uh, wait a second, like, who's got this drawing currently open? Oops, when I opened it, it kind of was unhappy with me. It's just thinking. So it removes this uncertainty that we've normally got. Because I opened up the other project, now it's wanting to synchronize just to make sure everything is fine. It removes the uncertainty. It, it removes like the worries to, am I overwriting somebody else's work? Am I um, currently doing, you know, the same job twice? So it helps with this document management as well. Very similar to the way Vault does. So that being said, we've been talking about this setting up your plant. We've talked about now how to connect to existing database and then how to access your design data, which is what we we're just basically talking about now. Oops, sorry. So just a little bit of a tip that I was asked the other day. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but now when you're wanting to maybe create local backup copies or work on something locally, or maybe you're going to a place that you don't have any internet access for some reason or the other, what you can do is if you're worried about not having access to the cloud for some reason, or if you're wanting to just pull a project off the cloud. Now, there's no direct way of taking it off the cloud, but there is a little bit of a quick workaround that people don't seem to realize or they forget about or don't take it into um, consideration. I'm just going to jump back to that project. It's going to take a second. Just bear with me, please. So just jumping back here, this is a very small one, specifically designed for this reason. What you can do is, remember, if you right click on a project, you get the ability to create a project backup. Now, when you create a project backup, you can then, um, if you want to change it, you see it's only 14 meg that's been going up and down, up and down, the reason why it's so fast. When you create this project backup, you're creating, you're taking it completely off the cloud and putting it onto your system as a local SQLite database. And then you can actually promote that into a full SQL if you want, but that's up to you how you want to run it. Okay, so while it's busy doing that, basically it is then creating this project locally, and it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. Obviously, like I said, I am on a very limited connection at the moment, so yay, South African internet. Okay, but it's basically, you can get what I mean that while it's busy doing that. So this kind of can relieve some people's issues with the cloud, that if you did want to get off it, there is an easy way to just quickly hop off and hop back on whenever you require. I wouldn't recommend it as a, as a full on workflow, because I mean, obviously if you've got a proper workflow in place and it does everything you need, why change it? Don't fix what ain't broke. Okay, while it's busy doing that, let me now talk a little bit about the reason why this is so much better and some of the other ways people work. So these alternative ways that people work and their pros and cons. So alternative ways that you could do this to get around different issues, etc., is our copy paste method, single user project, cloud file, <laughs> cloud file and folder syncing, OneDrive, SharePoint, folder sync, etc. Network shared for a single user project, network shared for a multi-user project, and then another network shared for Autodesk Vault. So let's take it on there. So copy paste method. Now copy paste is exactly as simple as it is. Um, this really is only ready for one to two people max. Um, when you're starting to get more than that, it just complicates matters. And the reason being for this is all you're doing is you're literally taking your whole project on maybe a USB flash drive or sending it by pigeon mail, I hope you need, from one computer to another computer. Now, this is 
this makes collaboration difficult and very time consuming and very manual because you're having to you've got no data protection you've got limited way of connectivity between the two systems and that there's no actual connectivity should i say per se between the two systems it's literally what you're manually moving between the two machines so maybe for very small systems very small offices or where you you've only got one or two people that's like in tight collaboration with one another straight off and maybe sitting next to each other you, you can get away with this but i wouldn't recommend this unless you are um very clued up and you understand the that this can go wrong if it's not handled correctly because like i said my biggest problem is there's no data protection here but it is quick it is easy and it does what you are required the other one is just a case of um your f cloud folder syncing now onedrive sharepoint etc and don't get me wrong they're very good at doing it for certain tasks but for plant please just don't 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 um, it sounds brilliant in the theory because, hey, you've got this folder. Now, theoretically, you take your project, you put it in this folder, it syncs to everybody's machine, and they have everybody's got the, the project. But this is where the issues come in. Now, depending on what cloud system you've got, you may have a system in place that says, oh, wait a second, this, um, this person is using this file, so, you know, it, it will lock access to it. But the problem is, remember, Plant's not just a normal drink package. It's actually like a complete database in the back end. And you have to be very careful about playing around with, you know, the files in the database in the back end. It's quite robust, but sometimes you can confuse it. And this cloud thing just, it's just, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. It causes problems more than it ever fixes them. I've seen multiple projects where this cloud folder thing, where they thought it was a good idea and the beginning and it just went horrible in fact one place they almost lost an entire project due to it and they were just that they were beyond lucky that somebody a few minutes beforehand had actually made a backup and they managed to rescue the entire um, project from that if it wasn't for that one person just just randomly being lucky and backing it up they would have lost everything so just whatever you do avoid this at all costs so like i said cloud folder syncing not since the greatest idea and this is don't, don't get me wrong this is different to bim and to how bim works because bim is designed to work correctly in this fashion very similar to vault but in a cloud platform okay the next thing i've got here just explaining my little diagram that i've got so i've got a computer that's sharing it so this is a network shared single user project now we've got our computer we've got our network so we've got, our, we've got our computer, we've got our network, we've got our subfolders, and then we've got a VPN, the internet, and other computers connecting it. So what do I mean by this? So I've got a single user project on one machine, maybe a server, maybe whatever you call it, but it's still a single user project. So when you're setting up a project, of course, the single user is normally the SQLite database, which means it's actually limited by connections. Um, there were some other limitations apparently in the past, but don't worry about that. But it is a limited SQL. It's not a full-on SQL. So this limits us to transactions and a few other things. But with smaller projects, this probably won't be as much of an issue. Just when you're getting to three, four, five people, then you really are wanting to look at a actual full-on SQL database. It's going to help you. Like I said, this is a high level. We're not going into the nuts and bolts here. So this means basically that for like a few machines sorry we've got the ability to connect them up so all of these machines can go but there is a very a, a very big thing here i have to stress depending on how you've got the setup normally all your files will be sitting sorry i keep clicking will be sitting in one central location which sounds brilliant at the time i mean yes vault um, BIM 360 that is sitting in a central location, but there's a huge difference here. These files are being streamed over a network, meaning that if you're working on computer A or computer B or computer C, they are all accessing these files. But when it's streaming data across a network, you've got a, you've got a possibility of actually corrupting this data. You're also streaming over a network, which means that you um, are putting this network under strain. 
depending on how many users, of course, the strain will increase significantly. Maybe not a lot, maybe um, maybe it's not significant, but also accessing these files backwards and forwards will be painful because it doesn't matter how good, you could have the strongest PC in the world, but if you're on a slow connection or your network's not doing so well, or if these things are on wire wireless, uh, there's so many things that could go wrong here. So although it does work, you do stand the problem. Uh, that you are working over a network now also the only way that your outside people can go so like i said my little world icon the only way that these other people then can connect into the system is via a vpn virtual private network and although this does work don't get me wrong vpns are great they're very good for security they um, allow people to connect into your system and you can control them but generally this can be very tricky to get working and just to add to the extra complexity is if you're doing this on a single user project, this, this just makes it a nightmare because now you've got computers outside that are going over a internet connection, over a local LAN connection, local area network, and then accessing a central system. So it does make it tricky. So, and the next one is very similar basically, which is a network share multi-user project. So multi-user, meaning that we've got a little SQL database, there's just my icon for SQL, uh, some form of database, where you've got a local project, and then it copies it here. Now, because of the way that the system works and the way that it pulls your collaboration files, it's not as, it's not as bad as the previous, but the biggest hurdle that we've got here is your outside people still connecting in. Don't get me wrong, working with a multi-user project internally is brilliant this works just really well in vault plus also sorry in plant and also just quickly skipping over to the next slide if somebody is working on a project now this was just quickly taken as a quick put i uh, want to give you a slight demo as to what it's working remember i mentioned this lock icon this lock icon is showing you that that file is currently being accessed and that lock icon will be different if of course somebody else is accessing it but if you had a whole bunch of drawings here you could then click on it and see if you're looking into the um, details who's got it open why they've got it open well maybe not why but you could at least go and email the person or get them on skype or call them and say hey you've got this drawing open may i access it and they can say no no no, they're busy working with it or yeah sure sorry i accidentally forgot it open and then they could close the drawing their side so sql will then help this whole system actually runs smoothly so plant has actually got its own project management system actually built into it which is really nice like i said my biggest problem here is with our vpn connection these external machines connecting in not like i said that it's bad but the problem is like here in south africa for an instance our internet connections are sometimes a little bit dodgy um, depending on where you are if you like me connecting via lte so this VPN thing can be the Achilles heel on the whole system and you can get issues with connections You can get issues with trying to just get people working correctly and this just can become problematic um, You can also stand to corrupt your data, but that's not as often So with this setup, although it does work really well for LAN It's just becomes a bit problematic with the whole VPN selection and tunneling into your network Our last one that we're working with is probably the better, or what I'm going to mention here, is probably the better version, if you're not wanting to go the BIM route, BIM 360, is Vault, a Vault shared multi-user project. So basically what's happening is you've got whatever system that you're working with locally, and now you've got now your Vault with your file store, whatever it is that you're working with. This can get very, very complex, very, very fast. I'm just doing it, like I said, high level. So you've got your Vault connected to your network, and your network then is got all these other computers. You're still going to need a VPN, but you've not noticed something that I've done here, which is a little bit different to all the previous ones. You notice here, everybody else has got their own, the, the, all the drawings are kept on one place, in one system. Where what Vault does is it allows you, very similar as to what Bin360 does, is it copies, you've worked with a local working folder. So in other words, you're not work, you're not streaming data continuously across these connections. Even over the VPN, you're not streaming it continuously. What happens is you access the project into the vault. The vault then, um, you then actually copy the local files onto your machine. You work with them locally. And then once you're done, remember that check-in, check-out feature 
Very there's the same thing in Vault. When you check the drawing back in, or should I say, when you check it out, checks it into your local, when you check it back in, it goes and it copies all the data you've modified into the Vault. And then the Vault can then say, oh, okay, cool. Um, this is the new folders. It then puts the other ones into a different version and it keeps your latest folders that you've now got, or files, should I say. So the nice thing about this is that you've got the ability to have a networked, properly managed system but still have the ability to even over the VPN work locally and then only stream the data backwards and forwards that needs to go backwards and forwards. If there's any corruption that occurs, it doesn't matter because you've got the, the data on both sides and it can then check, oh, wait a second, this, this file is not that great. Just resend the data through. So you, this is a much, much safer way of actually working with your systems. Yeah, on that note, um, that's basically the the same way as to how BIM 360 works, but you don't need an expensive Vault server, or not even expensive, but the just the upkeep, maintenance, etc. of a Vault server. Anybody who's used them before knows that it can be not not difficult, but it can be a tedious thing to do. It always has to be updated. You always have to have all your clients, for instance, on the same version as Vault. Um, so your AutoCAD has to be the same version, or it should be um, the same version as your Vault. Uh, all of your clients, so your Vault client that gets installed onto each one of these machines has to be the same version as your Vault. So everything, as you're working through, everything is dependent on everything else. Where with BIM 360, you can work, it's always, of course, best to work on the same version, but it's not version dependent, should I say. BIM 360 um, is its own entity, that runs and manages everything by itself. So, by the way, when you're working with Vault and you're checking in things in and out, you'll notice that your icons also do change. They look very similar, but also when you're clicking on your different projects, it will give you information as to who's checked things in and out in your project setup. You also notice, like I said, the icon changes. Remember the um, BIM 360's got a little B360 icon on it. So yeah, that is the major things and one of the reasons why I say BIM 360 is better because it, it it's cloud-based. You can access it from anywhere in the world as long as you've got that connection to that cloud. If you've got a solid connection to the cloud that you can pull and stream data backwards and forwards, you can have free access to the data. It's not dependent on any versions. It's not dependent on any locations. It's not dependent on anything apart from that access. As long as you've got access and you've got the program on your system, you can pull it backwards and forwards. Obviously, you have to be given the access also on the Plant 3D side. So, I mean, sorry, the BIM 360 side. So your admin has to give you permissions. Or if you're the admin, you have to give the other people permissions. Which is just a far simpler, easier, faster way of working than these other many systems that I've just shown you here. Because although, although they've got the niches and also some of them work for different people, if you're working outside of any organization or anything, it, it, you just battle to beat it. Um, for collaboration, this since the um, pandemic that's occurred, it's it, it's just been an absolute godsend for us, actually. It really has helped. So, other than that, sorry, I scrolled on a little bit too far there. Is there any questions that I have got? Please, as I said, you've noticed on the first slide, I showed you how to quickly do the chat. The chat's the two little speech bubbles below. Do I have any queries from anyone? Okay, I'll give you a minute or a little bit. Okay, I don't see anybody ask any questions just yet. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll just keep an eye on it while I'm rambling over here and, uh, to finish off. But yeah, like I said, in the summary, our ability to communicate via the cloud and use this BIM 360 is just... An, uh, I can't begin to enough to say as to how this has changed our way of working. And if you are interested, please... Uh, if you're interested in this, if you're interested in uh, asking any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a shout. Uh, we've got our uh, several branches throughout the country. I'm at the Durban branch. Uh, if you need anything, give us a shout, drop us a mail, give us a call. We're always more than willing to answer any questions. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me on this webinar. This is going to be available on YouTube as well. 
you're seeing this on YouTube, <laughs> sorry, YouTube, not YouTube. <laughs> if you're seeing this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much for joining me. Cheerio. Goodbye.